Yes, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Wrestling Skull Podcast, episode 87 tonight. Uh, I'm your host John Scott, joined as always by my co-host Matt Essex. Matt, how are you doing this week and uh, how's your week been? Yeah, it's been a quite a good week actually, yeah, can't complain. Uh, still trying to amp myself up for WrestleMania, slowly getting there, but I mean slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, slow is the word, mum's the word there I think. I think, um, you know, um, I was a little bit, I felt like last week's show I was somewhat in the, the dumps, the way that come across. I did re-listen to it and I was thinking, God, I... I sound very bitter about the product currently, and uh, you know I've got to say this past week I haven't I've, I've watched both Raw and SmackDown. Um, I haven't really put as much enthusiasm into either show um, for for that v- very reason of our, our last podcast, um, which of course was actually a uh, lot we've done we done it on Tuesday, um, but uh, yeah you know I'm just gonna probably be. Um, low expectations um, all the way in. I think I think that's the best way to go into this because then the only way is up, as they say, and uh, I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, coming up on the show, we're going to be taking all your questions that I've had emailed in over the past uh, seven, eight, nine days, whatever it's been. Haven't taken questions for a while. Got an old uh, old face back on the list as well, Matt. Um, hint, hint. Uh, any guesses on that? Who that is? Uh, on the questions, and then we're going to also talk about the Hall of Fame, uh, a little bit more news coming up there, um, just some some stuff going on, um, so a potential spoiler for tonight's Raw, just to give you guys a little bit of a recap, and uh, yeah, we're just going to be talking about all the, the past stuff, plus a little bit more on Impact Wrestling as well, so um, yeah, stay tuned for that, but let's Let's dive straight in, something we don't normally do on the show, but we normally wait always till the end, but I thought we make, we'll make we make this the main event of our show tonight, and uh, we're going to take some questions. So, first question here coming up is from Craig Barkley, um, who doesn't agree with us here, Matt, so, so get ready. Uh, I don't agree with you about the main event at Mania. Randy is such a boring babyface. He's won the Rumble... But he's got no fan momentum going into Mania this year as a Royal Rumble winner. Or even a desire from fans to see him want to win the title. My son also, who is eight, asked me why Randy burned Bray's compound down and felt sorry for Bray. My view is Goldberg (laughs) versus Brock for the Universal title goes on last. Or why else would they have made sure there is a title involved? It's a bigger match, your opinion. Um, well, you know, it's a fair point, And, you know, listen, everybody's entitled to their opinions. And just because I say one thing does not mean that, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely right. And, you know, it's a fair point, Matt. I mean, if we, it, you know, Randy Orton isn't exactly the most Mr. Hot at the moment um, as far as fan reaction goes. I don't, I don't think it's the sort of Daniel Bryan momentum going into WrestleMania wanting to see him sort of win the title, is it? But um, it, it's a confusing story, uh, I think, with this one, because first we thought, you know, it was just going to be Randy, and, well, it was, first of all, it was Randy versus Cena, then it's Randy versus Bray, then it's then it's not Randy, and it's going to possibly be another opponent, then it's a triple threat, then we're, we're expecting Randy just to turn at WrestleMania, and then it goes back to one-on-one again. It, it's been a confusing uh, thing, and I think it's, it's been very. You talk about fans not being able to get on board with Randy. I, I think part of the reason of that is the fact there's been no consistency with Randy Orton, uh, and and really it's been quite boring uh, from his end because everything's been pretty much Bray Wyatt, and you know Randy Orton's just he, he's kind of like uh, you know I'm sure you saw uh, SmackDown last week, Matt. You know you saw Bray on the big screen, Randy Orton. You know, he's looking at that video, Matt, like I look at the YouTube clip sometimes and I, I think to myself, I've got that confused look on my face like Randy did. I mean, the reactions to it was not exactly, uh, you know, he didn't get much out of Randy on that. He's the sort of worst person for reactions. He's looking at it like I was looking at one of those videos thinking, oh, where's the skip button? Um, in, in a lot of ways. Um, what do you make of that, Matt, about that being the main event and, and 
you know, is, is there an argument your back from your way, Matt, as to say this should be still uh, the main event as far as Randy's won the Royal Rumble? It's you know they always say that that earns you the main event, but I'm not so sure these days. Um, where do you lie with this, Matt, and, and that match? tending to go with like personal preference like i'm not saying that randy and bray is going to be a box office smash or like the best match that we'll see of the year i'm just saying that randy has put in consistent amounts of work and worked at the highest level and kind of deserves to main event wrestlemania more than goldberg and brock does mm. um i mean i'm sure it'll be a huge match and it has to, it has to, please God, it has to go on more than three minutes. Um, that's the other concern, like, from what we've seen from these two guys, like, the matches are incredibly short, and I would feel incredibly disappointed if I'd waited all night long for WrestleMania. And bearing in mind, a lot of people, like, especially in Europe, won't be watching WrestleMania live, they'll be watching it the next day, and then, you know, they'll pause it before the main event to go get a, like, a coffee or a tea or whatever, or, and get some lunch or something like that. And then when they unpause it, the, the time will show up and then they'll see, oh, right, I've got two minutes of the show left. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that could be quite disappointing for what you've been waiting for all night or all afternoon to watch WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just think, you know, Randy and Bray will put on a longer match, um, a more dynamic kind of match. I'm not saying the story's great because they keep using this thing about a roller coaster ride is the journey to oh, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. And Randy's stories had ups, downs, twists, turns, but in the end, nobody really cared. You know? <laughs> and I'm hoping that like we'll just get past this at WrestleMania and then move on in the next year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on a side note, Matt, uh, interesting point that he said. You know, his his son, uh, who, who's only eight saw it that way that randy was doing the bad thing um do you think that is also in the majority of fans in general that watch the product in that way that that they it's 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 a confusing situation between these two and is i mean personally i don't think they've done a good enough job of explaining why the hell randy even joined them and and went all this way and all this far to to do all this there's there's no real sort of there's no sort of telling of anything here it's very much just happening week to week and we're just we're just having to accept what we're seeing but it's not it's not been great storytelling in that sense there's no real clear good and bad here and i think this is one of those situations where they definitely needed to distinguish that early on. Um, how do you see it, Matt, a bit from, from that, that sort of fan perspective of somebody who's not going to read all the, the sheets and the internet and, you know, you just go in there or you're, you know, you're a young kid, um, you're watching these two. Would you, would you, do you think you would be the same? Uh, well, this is one of the, uh, the most interesting things I've noticed about this year, actually come to think of it. And um, something that I actually quite kind of like and I'm looking forward to, that a lot of characters these days, and especially when you take someone like Randy Orton, they're sticking to a little bit of their backstory a little bit mm. more. Yeah. Like, Randy isn't a good guy character, and, you know, at best, all he can be is a great kind of character. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same with Bray Wyatt, you know. He's supposed to be a heel, and like, but, you know, a lot of people like him and respect the work that he's put in. But we're seeing it all the time now. We're seeing, like, Austin Aries going into a match with Neville. Like, mm, who's the yeah. heel in this match? Because yeah, yeah. Austin Aries is supposed to be a heel and the way he does, he conducts his interviews and all of that. And then we're seeing people like on NXT, like Bobby Roode, you know, incredibly mm-hmm. kind of supposed to be putting off the heel role, but his entrance elevates mm-hmm. him to a kind of like meteoric face status. Yeah. Um, so it's a really interesting time for me that a lot of wrestlers don't actually go black or white. There's a lot of grey areas and... I'm pretty glad that we're not seeing the good guy Randy Orton because for me that was his more kind of um, boring time zone when he had to pander to the fans when his best work sort of comes from ignoring all of that. Mm, yeah, that was awful as well. Um, yeah, um, I mean um, to your point, Craig. Listen, the only the only way, and I'm trying to think of last year, Matt, because the Triple H, the the only way Brock Lesnar Goldberg works for me going on at the end, if there, there's an argument possibly for this, and I'll only bring up and in comparison to last year's WrestleMania because I tell you, 
when I watched last year's WrestleMania, Matt, and we had The Rock who came out and done that whole, you know, he lit his name on fire, didn't he? Um, and, you know, he spent about a good 20 minutes segment. And, you know, then the Whites came down and then Cena came out to help him and all the rest of it. And I've got to be honest, by the time that had all finished, I was exhausted of WrestleMania with all the kickoff. And then I knew that I was going to have to watch Triple H and Roman Reigns. And you, you know that watching it, you think to yourself, OK, well, it's going to be a good 15, 16 minutes before we start getting the near falls. Uh, and that crowd was well out, well, was well zoned out of that main event. I mean, there was no doubt about it. They were, they were zapped from the energy of, of all this other stuff going on. So if there is any any good reason for that Brock match to come on at the end would be the fact that fans will be sitting there thinking it could end at any moment. <laughs> we better make sure we're watching because you just don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, make sure you're going to going to see it. Um, that is the only um, positive reason I would see of having that as being the main event. But again, it depends the pacing of WrestleMania because I felt last year was a bit diabolical with having The Rock come out that late and I felt like with everything else that went on with The Undertaker and Shane, and there were some big matches and fans, you know, we've been there ourselves, Matt. I mean, in those big shows like SummerSlam, you, you get drained after a while. You know, you can only have so much of that um, when, when you're there live. And um, it, it does happen. So the, 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 that, for me, would be the only reason WWE may decide to put Brock versus Goldberg on last um, because... Maybe that will just be the, the match that everyone can hasn't got to think to themselves, OK, we've got to wait 15, 16 minutes and be zoned out a bit if our energy is drained because it could be over in a heartbeat um, from what we've already seen. So uh, that that would be my take on it, Matt. Any, anything to add to that, Matt, on, on your side? Is there any matches that we're, we're, we're overshadowing? Do you think this could be even another main event going on? Likelihoods, you know, as much as I kind of want like Randy Orton and Bray to go on last, mm. like just for the amount of like commitment they have to their work right now, I think it probably will end up being Brock and Goldberg <laughs> just because WWE spent a long time building up this feud. This is we're not talking about like something that's happened, we're talking about like, months here mm. and the whole setup. And, and as much as they brought Goldberg in, he was supposed to be short lived, it kind of is panning out now like there was a longer game plan in the yep. works. And the, although like it was embarrassing the way we were beaten the first time, it just feels like it was all geared up for Brock's revenge. And mm. But that's the downside to it that for this to work, it definitely feels like Brock has to win. Otherwise, mm. what do you do with Brock after this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no doubt about it. Well, uh, thank you very much anyway for your question there, Craig. And uh, I think we, we went into enough detail there. Uh, okay, next uh, question is from Leah. Um, oh, um, yeah, she, she's been she's been going through all the WrestleManias, you'll remember, Matt, uh, from last time. Um, hey, I'm up to Mania 12 now. Iron Man match was incredible. I have a few questions from Mania 10 and 11. First off, why did WWE have Owen Hart beat Brett in the opening match when Brett went on to win the WWF title that night. Um, by the way, it was an outstanding match. Also, at Mania 11, why did they choose Diesel over HBK in the title match? Um, okay, so let, let's start with those uh, th those first two ones there, Matt. I mean, I think you'll remember the, the classic match between Owen and uh, Brett from WrestleMania 10, Matt. Um, you know, yeah. probably one of the best if not the best first match to a WrestleMania, probably, of all times, I would say. Uh, it's definitely got to be in the top, top three, I would imagine. I don't think anything else would rank too high with that kind of quality of match. But um, I think, basically, the reason there, Leah, was kind of like, well, if you know Brett's going to... like, It wasn't a tournament kind of thing. 